All right, good evening and welcome back to the 2018 American 14.1 Straight Pool Championships. We are sponsored in this event. Ivan Simonis cloth. All the tables have been covered with new cloth. We are using brand new sets of Aramith balls. High Rock and Predator have been getting the room ready, organized, the live stream, hooking us up with the QSCO electronic scoring systems. Thanks for that. We also have Jay Peachower Custom Cues, Tweet and Fiber, and Dennis Walsh, attorney at law from Chicago, Illinois, making a nice donation. Thank you, Dennis. Our two you are in the uh, quarterfinals. Uh, so there's just eight players left. Uh, some of them have already been played. In this match, we have Dennis Orcoyo from the Philippines. Dennis has won many, many, many tournaments. He is sponsored by Bugsy Promotions, Acme, and Omega Billiards. His opponent, Thorsten Homan, also winner of countless, countless tournaments. Sponsored by Cyclop Balls, Volmer Cues, and Kamui Tips and Products. This is a match to 150 points. Lag for break. Good luck. So hi everybody and welcome to our corner final match here in the American 14.1 championship between Dennis Okuyo and Torsten Homan. This is Darren Frank. I'm joined by Ralph Eckert. Hello, Ralph. Hello, Darren. I'm excited to be calling this match with you. What do you think? I mean, we got uh, two real different kind of straight pool players over here, don't we? Uh, if you would have to pick a favorite player in this match, who would you uh, <laughs> who would you put put up your bed? It's a tough decision. Uh, they both play great, and like you said, they play very different. I think it is always hard to bet against Torsten Homan in straight pool. <laughs> I guess yeah, that's not not no normally not that smart. To I, bet I, I don't Torsten think I ever would would so want to take that bet. So I, he uh, would be my pick. <laughs> on the yeah on the. On the paper, you know, he's obviously the favorite because nobody has so many straight pool uh, titles mm -hmm. on his, uh, on his, yeah, in collected in his career. So, but it's still, even though he's the favorite on the paper, it's still totally open because also in the field of the last eight, we see so many straight, uh, so many strong straight pool players. And everybody is able to come to the table and run out or run a hundred. Uh, we've seen that a lot in that tournament, right? Absolutely. And so uh, as long as this match is not going to 500 points, it's his. Uh, he might be the favorite, but but not for not for sure, you know. Right, right. And when you're only playing to 150, and either of these players are capable. Uh, Torsten in his last match ran 144 hmm. and then got in trouble. So, And, and uh, Dennis O'Collier just run 127 and out. Oh I know wow. that because he was doing that up to me. <laughs> oh, unfortunate. <laughs> so I was leading 122 and he was running out with oh 123. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Torsten won the lag, so Dennis broke. It's a safety break in straight pool. So two balls have to hit a rail. And he made a nice break, but he left Torsten a shot, uh, which he made. And this is sort of exactly what Dennis didn't want. So now he has to so find another So with this angle on the 11 ball, he can only send the cue ball all around the table to bring it somewhere back down there. 
But uh, the worst thing is if you do this all around the table thing, then you land up on the same side right. where the 11 is now. And you would like to prefer to have it on the other side to have a shot, a break shot on the 2 or 13. Because I think from that side, there's no way for him to break up the rack. So he needs to find a way to get to the other side of the table. Can he maybe draw it up table and try and wind up on the other side? So if you do that, and normally you have too much automatic uh, right side spin, and it's, uh, it brings the cue ball too early. May maybe to oh, look at this. A lot of right side English, spin. And oh, he's, he's going, going right into, into the <laughs> rack. Into the rack. How about that? That's that a good a idea. Shot, didn't turn. Right. Not rewarded very well, as far as I see here. Yeah, looks like that 13 ball goes, so. Yeah, he's in yeah, good shape here. Got a shot. So what do you think? Do you agree with Torsten to open the balls up as much as possible, or really? I know that's his his preference and you know he said they're a lot easier to run out when they're spread all over the table obviously it is yeah I mean it's different to the old um, or the more traditional style of straight pool play but this old traditional style comes from other times where the cloth was more slow the balls were more, more heavy and um, yeah and even back from the time where they had those before 1949, they had those 10 foot tables also. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess Mike DeShane had a slogan uh, a couple of years uh, ago. He said, the game has changed, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> maybe All maybe the games are different. Maybe the game has in straight pool has changed a little. Mm. Do you think he's already decided what he's going to leave here? Yeah, it looks like the three ball and the eight ball before. Mm -hmm. From the eight, he gets easy and nice shape on the three ball to break. And, uh, but then he need to, yeah, take care of those three balls here. M he might you have to use the the eight ball now to get position on this 5-1 and 4 ball. Not much angle though. Yeah, I think he wanted to come off the rail a little mm. more. If he wants to, um, yeah, because the 8 ball is gone, it's not mm. so easy anymore to get a perfect shape on the 3 ball. So if he would have the possibility, he would try to open maybe. So for example, if the one ball would go, then he would probably try to bring the four ball on the other side of the rack mm. as a break shot. But that's not on here. So actually, he's in uh, a little trouble to open this one four ball. Yeah, it's a little difficult to. If he pockets the four now, he's not going to hit them. Right? If he pots the four, then. The one and the five are still too close together. So you're shooting the five. Mm. Maybe the four and one, uh, they look also like a promising combination. Mm. After the 14. Or the six and get on the other side. You got both options now, so six and then four, one, three. We will never know if the combination would have gone on. <laughs> we'll have to live without it. It seems like if there's any way not to shoot a combination or a shot like that, then that's the preference.
And if that's true, usually you, you wouldn't want to leave your key ball below your break ball. It's easier to come from on top of it, or it doesn't Maybe. really matter. Like all the, um, or like most of the rules you mm -hmm. have or advices of this kind, yes, in a high percentage, yes, it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. true, but there are always exceptions to the rules, mm -hmm. right? Especially in straight pool, you have so many possibilities. And, uh, but it would be an advantage to have it nearby or upper, more up than the, than the break shot itself. Break ball. So let's see. We got this angle. So probably he's playing that with a follow because normally he prefers to play draw, draw shot and draws them all over the table, right? But here he has to um, has to make a follow. Otherwise, he has to jack up with the cue. Mm -hmm. Is there a worry about scratching? No, not much. Yeah. <laughs> If you got this angle, you know. Mm. So, the good old 10 ball. <laughs> so they're all over the table. So I, I think to uh, somebody who's not familiar as much with straight pool or maybe doesn't watch a lot of it, when they look at something like this, mm -hmm. you have a lot of choices of what to shoot. Mm -hmm. And it seems... Like you can shoot any ball and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But he's choosing a very particular pattern. And is there a way, when I watch this game, if I, if I want to learn about what the right pattern is or how mm -hmm. to play the right pattern, mm -hmm. what's a good way to, to watch and study the game a little to learn that? Because h how do you know... Like yeah. Why he shot? Why is he shooting the five ball, not the two ball per se? Mm. You know what's what is what's he's trying to accomplish? You know, is he trying to say clear balls underneath and free up First paths of all, to the pocket? You said there are so many options. Right. So you said a three and a two ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Maybe some player would have chosen the two ball. Mm -hmm. So it's not doesn't mean he plays the three ball. The two ball would be the wrong ball, mm -hmm. right? Uh, as long as he can manage his way through the rack. Um, um, but for example, one little drill, and you know, I I like I like drills. <laughs> one one drill would be uh, called, in original it was called brainwashing from Jim Rampey. At least when I I saw it the first time, and I developed a little game out of it, like the brain game. You break the balls, maybe if you are a more beginner with six balls, later on with 10 and then with 15, uh, you break the rack and everything which is closer than uh, half diamond to the rail, all those balls you have ball in hand. And then you have to place them in connection to the other remaining balls all over the table and so that you can run or see patterns to run it without touching any rail or doing any carom. Mm. This, because you have to play so many balls mm -hmm. by yourself mm -hmm. and have to connect them with the remaining balls in the middle of the table, it creates a lot of lines and patterns in your brain all the time. Mm. And when you do this for a couple of weeks, it helps you to see, like all the top players, not see a pattern of 14 different balls, uh, you see a pattern of, oh, this group belongs together, this group, and that. Mm. And then you just connect them. And, and then it becomes even easier because you don't have to get always a uh, perfect straight in shape because uh, also with some angles you can always use the rail coming back again. But this uh, game would teach you to, um, to develop the, the sight, the look at the table to see the patterns. Otherwise, you just play it, and eventually the patterns will come to you. This is what Ray Martin once said. The patterns will come to you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some of us, they come to faster than others. Towards through another rack. I mean, uh, 
anything can happen on this uh, level of uh, players, right? Mm. He can he can uh, run out the whole the whole match, uh, which would be fantastic. But suddenly he can make a mistake, and we can have a safety battle. And everything is there. It's well, I think the interesting thing about this game is that every ball requires so much concentration and that if you have a lapse mm -hmm. for just a moment and miss one ball, it can cost you the whole match. That's right. Wow. That's that's a Trosten Holman break. That's the patented. <laughs> Draw the ball all the way up the table, smash the balls everywhere. So he doesn't really have many problems again, I think because they're all over the table, so. The 14 and the four ball, mm -hmm. he has to take care of. I wouldn't say problems, but he has to make sure, okay, how to handle those two balls. To, uh, can I clear them in a certain way, in some pattern? Maybe the 14 can, if so, will pass if he shoots the 11 before, right? And, and that's what you're thinking about first, right? Yeah. How do you want to get rid of so that problem? So if the 14 is away, then, uh, the 11 is away, then later on I can, I got a clear pass for the 14. And you want to do that as early in the rack as possible, right? Because any time you run into a ball, then yeah. unknown things could happen. Yeah. That's also nice. So either way, if you do it this or that way, you try to take care of these uh, problems pretty mm -hmm. soon or when you, like the traditional way, when you like to leave them till the end, then you know, I have an exactly idea mm. how you're going to uh, take care of those. So he uses a pink glove. Can you tell us something about the pink glove campaign from, it's a, it's a Kamui glove, I, I isn't can. it? Yeah, it's, it's October, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and so for that, Kamui started a campaign to donate funds to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, which is one of the leading charities in breast cancer research. And they have made a pink glove and a pink Dr. Z is the shaft cleaner, and so a portion of all those proceeds go to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Mm -hmm. and so Torsten is a sponsor player of Kamui, and so he's he's matching. He's got pink collar, pink gloves. He's very aware of uh, breast cancer awareness. So, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to get a to get a um, pink chalk from Kamui pretty pink soon, chalk. right? <laughs> <laughs> Might make a little bit of a mess. <laughs> I don't know. On the blue cloth, if that would go over so well. So if we talk about sponsors, then we can also mention our sponsors here from our tournament. Molinari, I see. Predator. Gram Cafe. Husco. Percher. Ivan Simones. High Rock. Hermit. Did I forgot anything? And we got uh, some private sponsorships also here. No, we do. Dennis Walsh. Hi, yes. Dennis. Hi, Dennis. DennisWalshLaw.com uh, in Illinois. We've got the uh, Derby City Classic Straight Pool Challenge, also put on by Dennis Walsh. It's a great event they have every year at Derby City where people pay for a number of tries and go for a high run. It's always really exciting every year. Uh, Peter and Sandy Sears from Verona. Uh, Rebecca Burroughs, Eric Addington. Tom Glitch. Gleich. Gleich. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Nate and Liza Silinski. Bob Jewett. Alex Gorokovic. Richard Klein. Tweet and Fiber Company. Uh, and JP Chower Custom Q. So thanks, everybody, for donating to this tournament. I think we, um. promoter Peter Burroughs, has put together. It's the 14th year. I think now definitely the best straight pool tournament in the world. I think we have the nice. best field. So. so it's always appreciated if they help to keep straight pool alive, which is such a classic game. And in the meantime, uh, Torsten Hurt was hurting his uh, break shot. The nine ball was former 
formerly the perfect break shot, and mm -hmm. then uh, it went into the rack, and now... Is he going to bump the five here? Yeah, he tried oh. it, <laughs> and... He's usually so good at that, mm. which is really hard. I, it looks... I think when he does it, sometimes it looks easier than it is, but to get the exact right angle and hit it with the right speed in there, it just didn't work out. So what, what would you do here? What's his backup The plan? only chance you get an angle uh, of open the next rack is the 12 ball. So he has to go Why he's going for the 7 first. You can also uh, give it a 7 first, then you get it easier to get a position from the 5 to the 12. Mm. I mean, I'm talking about more of the side pocket here. Right. Or the 12. But that's why he's shooting the seven first. Otherwise, of course, now it's easier to shoot the five, but it's very hard to get a uh, uh, nice position from the seven to the 12. Mm. Mm, hit that really well. Nice draw. I guess he can go now, maybe on the cue ball on the short rail and and up again. Oh, he's drawing, so he's going on the other side. So with this angle, he might can go... Uh, hmm. He doesn't have a lot of angles. Because no, be ideally, not. from here, you'd like to hit one of the two head balls. Am I right? Um... From the situation where it is, I mean, it's not—it's so it's so far up from the, from the rack, mm -hmm. so he can also go shoot very hard and try to get it long rail, short rail, and hit the rack from the back, mm -hmm. or going maybe only long rail, and from there back into the rack. And the other possibility is draw it directly, maybe hitting with a nice draw shot the three or fourteen ball directly. I guess it's uh, two rails. Two rails. Because I mean, then you get a lot of velocity, right? Mm. I think if you draw it, you usually don't get quite as much speed going down the rack. He's drawing it. Ooh, dangerous. 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 <laughs> he was doing that especially to frighten us. I think so. <laughs> well, anytime you do it that way, it's scratch risk, right? Because absolutely, kind of hit the corner of the rack like that, and it guides the ball toward the pocket. Maybe it's only us who thinks that there's a dangerous <laughs> of scratch, and, he and Torsten knows exactly that it right. cannot scratch it. To us, there was a danger. <laughs> to Torsten, there's no danger. <laughs> so, eight ball or trying with the 14 to get a better position on this same eight ball? Ooh. Yeah, he's trying to cheat the pocket. Get yeah, it he out he as did cheat good the pocket. He, he almost did. cheated the pocket a little bit too much. But it worked out for him. So he can still get a curve into the three ball and open the rack a little bit more. Nicely done. Well, either way, a long shot on the five or with a six ball. And yeah. Take the five here, don't you think? Yeah, he's going for the five. Uh, way better options. Well, the balls he would like to run into are the 15 and the seven, right? From where the six is. Mm. is not much from not very promising there. Mm. So five ball, three ball, and I mean he can get a perfect shape on the four ball to break the, the mm. remaining cluster. He's going for the four ball directly, so you might think about four, six, and nine. Mm, or maybe the two. Not a two. Or the one, even, depending. Mm. Yeah, the one from here, probably. Does he have yeah. enough angle? Yeah, he got angle. Mm. 
I shouldn't come on with too many predictions in straight pool because <laughs> there are too many, too many too many possibilities, right? Mm. That's why I like to make commentary in nine ball or ten ball because they, can, <laughs> they cannot them. change their decision. <laughs> <laughs> it's only about safe or running, uh, right. uh, to keep to keep the keep the game running, you know. Well, I think it's interesting because everybody sees the table differently, like you said. You can only play it the way that you see it. But still, I like Naimo, you know. So now he plays the one, I'm pretty sure. And after that, I tell you what, he's going for it too. <laughs> it makes things very easy, you know. Yeah, yeah that's true. That, that's, uh, that's true. And this you is also you sound a like hint. you know what you're talking about a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> I called it three uh, three shots ago. I said he was going to shoot the five. So. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and uh, it, it shows you also why it costs you so much concentration in straight pool. Mm. Because you constantly think about, should I go for this or that ball? Should I go this way or that way? Right. Especially if you have more possibilities than just one. You right. Know? And you can't really make a plan for the rack because Not once you start running yeah. in the balls and the position of things change, then you're going to have to change your plan. That's why do you uh, divide it, uh, you divide uh, open rack into groups of balls. Mm. So you're thinking about the 13 and the 11 as a group. You're thinking about the... Yeah. yeah. And then the, the balls uh, with the potential break shot, the ball before the potential break shot, that's a group himself. Mm. You know, maybe another ball before also. So usually you can find uh, three groups on the open table. If it's lesser balls, only two. Mm. Maybe some some ball uh, which is lonely in the kitchen down there maybe makes uh, makes up a group on his own. Mm. But um, yeah, this gives you a way better overview. <laughs> but to give them further explanation, you would have to take a class. Probably come to Berlin and take. Ten hour pool power. <laughs> Ten hour pool power. How many days do you do that over? In Berlin? Mm -hmm. What, the ten hours or in yeah, how many times? What's the program look like? Oh, depends. If somebody comes from uh, far away, then uh, he tries to. Uh, keep the hotel room costs low, so he does that in maybe five hours one day and five hours the other day. He got only one one night to stay somewhere. And, uh, and uh, local clients, they do just two hours and then they maybe train like three, four weeks and then they do another two hours and so on. Mm -hmm. And I think he tried to hit the 10 ball there didn't quite get it and you know this is one of the issues with getting down to the last few balls and still having a problem is that he's going to run out of balls to hit the other balls with. although it looks like the 10 goes doesn't it he's checking it I mean the two ball is not there's no angle so he cannot go on the other side the only alternative would be if the combination doesn't go that he plays a perfect position on the 7 into the side pocket Looks like he might be able to. You don't think he can hit him off the two ball? Uh, yeah, he's. He's not sure. I mean, if he has to check it uh, three times, then I don't make a prediction from here. As fast as Torsten plays, he usually, <laughs> <laughs> he usually plays so fast. Elevate the cube. So it's gonna fly back at you. Yeah, Ooh, there was that some was angle. Nice. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Hmm. That's okay. That's not your first class comfort position zone. Mm. Especially. Oh, I see on the right left corner of your screen, you see. Uh, I, I do see a gentleman Michael over Frank. there. <laughs> <laughs> see a gentleman. Your dad. He had birthday yesterday, right? Look at that. Wow, nice shot. Really pretty shot. 
I think a lot of people don't wouldn't have the confidence to shoot that ball because yeah. it went in the side. Yeah. I would still shoot it, but I would be very afraid. <laughs> 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 well, I, it's one of the differences, I think, you know, at a certain level is if you know the right ball, can you shoot the right ball, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think right. it's, uh, it's a difficult question. It's a difference to chess, right? Mm. I mean, if you right. know the, you know <laughs> you know the, the right, right move, strategy, you can always make it. In, in, in chess, you can, you can still execute it, right? Well, uh, that's <laughs> an interesting point, actually, because you don't have to consider percentages. So in pool, you have to consider percentages. Mm -hmm. you know, whether you want to take an 80% shot or whether you want to play a safety. So he hits the nine ball with... 100 miles an hour, the ball hour. hits the 15, then the 11, goes down to the head rail and <laughs> comes back again or something. I like it when he hits it so hard that the cue ball jumps and lands more in the balls. Those are my favorite. Hmm. You see wow. the difference? Uh, this, uh, it wasn't a 15 first, mm. it was the 11 ball, so the lower ball first, no, the, the upper ball first. Right. And this forces, he can draw as much as he wants. Uh, this forces the cue ball always to go the other direction. Mm. You have just three basic directions where the cue ball can go when you have the brake shot beside uh, on the side of the rack. You always hit um, a pair of balls. Right. Right. And there it matters if you hit the lower ball first or the upper ball first. If you hit the lower ball first, the cue ball has the general tendency to go back to the head zone of the table. If you hit the upper ball first, it goes in a lower zone of the table. And there are only, uh, if you hit one ball as um, full, so full that it won't hit its neighbor ball, then it's very hard to predict where mm. the cue ball goes. And then you can have a lot of affection also with follow or draw. I like those good old Brunswick tables here. <laughs> yeah, really nice conditions here at Karam. Yeah. It's a great place to play. They took especially care of those uh, tables or the shape of the tables before the tournament. Uh, they all look great. They play very consistent, I feel like, uh, which is nice not to have tables that play differently than, than the others. So. They also host a very big three cushion world championship here every year. I guess uh, they keep three cushion in, uh, in general in the whole states. They keep three cushion alive over here, right? Uh, probably. This may be <laughs> the, only <laughs> the only place. <laughs> Is it uh, maybe the last <laughs> remaining spot here? Possibly. It's not a very popular game with us. Although I heard that they're in South Korea, I was told that there are 30,000 carom halls oh yeah Karam rooms i was there once and yes i noticed that there that Karam is very popular so many well pool used to be more popular here too in in 1900 there were more pool halls in new york city than there are starbucks today yes i know that like four thousand mm -hmm. and in the 80s there was exactly one lab right <laughs> <laughs> so everybody go to pool halls we need to yes. <laughs> we need to save the game <laughs> sell your television <laughs> <laughs> not a screen you're watching <laughs> the commentary <laughs> Okay, so you think he'll 10-2 last? Yeah. yeah. So then he'll go 14-7, 10-2? Yeah. Because I think the key at the end is you want to move the cue ball as little as possible, right? I call mm, that the it's not it only at the essential end. Essential pattern. You, you right? try well, yeah, the whole time. <laughs> the whole well, that's time. the point of your drill. Right. Without mm. hitting a rail to play all the balls, you have to learn to move the cue ball as little as possible. So if he got straight in here, which 
it's nice when you can play with just about perfect speed. Yeah. That's helpful. That's very helpful. I think that's one of the biggest differences in in the game. Like his level. That speed control was so you good. See? Yeah, he got a different angle. Yeah, he's a little bit low, right? So he has to send maybe the cue ball up, table. up and up mm -hmm. the table and back. Put some inside spin. Keep the oh angle. Stay away from that side pocket. Ooh. Okay. Dangerous there. And Torsen on a run of 70 now, I believe. Yeah, he's on 70. So we're almost halfway there. Mm. And Dennis, other than the break, has not had a shot. The game before, yeah, we, he was in a similar situation. Because I was going ahead That's with 105. Right. Oh. <laughs> Thorsten was in the opposite situation. He was <laughs> down 86 to nothing. Yeah, fantastic. And then he came up and came up with 144. 44. Yeah. And then he got stuck. <laughs> with six balls left. So, high English again. Let's see how hard he hits these. Most people, I'd, most people don't hit that break shot very hard because you have so much angle. Look at this. You can get the, you know, you don't need all the velocity. Probably he won't like this cut on the 15, on the 13. The combination 3, 4 or 4, 3. Yeah. He has to cut also the 4 ball very thin and mm. that's from a long distance. So the 10 ball is also is taking into consideration here. I think. Can he even hit the three ball directly, maybe? Oh, maybe. Oh, he played that. Ooh, oh, yeah. He hit the four ball first yeah. and caromed into the three. Wow. Never a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Not for him. <laughs> I would have found a way to scratch. You would? Yeah. <laughs> could avoid uh, the contact with the 10 ball, so he got now a nice angle, almost too much of an angle, mm -hmm. but a nice angle to take care of the remaining cluster of the ball. Oh, a little unfortunate there. Now he's in trouble. I mean, I see only the long two ball there. Mm. Oh, if he can pass that, maybe the 13. So. So if you want to make a big run, once in a while you have to survive a pretty difficult challenge. Right. And he's a favorite to make this ball. He let it look easy sometimes, you know, yeah. all those players let it look easy, but inside them there is, there is, you know, mm. <laughs> it's, it costs a lot of concentration, a lot of energy, it's... Do you have anything that you do in situations like that to keep yourself calm or just focus on something? I, mean, I know some players tell themselves just to stay down or whatever do you have anything like that that you do hmm. well there are two strategies one strategy is uh, shoot it immediately so that you are faster than the doubt <laughs> 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 and if you are not fast enough for that <laughs> then uh, yeah you have to deal uh, with it and uh, take it uh, take it uh, yeah the long way or do it don't concentrate on the result, concentrate on 
the things you have to do. I have like a, a seven step um, routine mm -hmm. on every shot. Mm -hmm. So I concentrate to take a perspective from there, to build up a nice uh, picture, um, a visualization of what I'm trying to do, take my stands, um, mm. start a, start a start an observation from the eyes going back and forth, back and forth, until I think, hmm, that might gonna work. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, when I give, a, when I give an okay, or then I, um, then I release the shot. And after the okay, there's no correction allowed anymore. Mm. And then I release the shot in a high quality way, of course. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, stay down, very important. You concentrate on stay down, don't move. Mm -hmm. And then you go up again. So that's those seven steps. And if you just put quality in every step, mm. then the making of the ball is just a logical result mm. of this. That's the perspective I look at it. So I'm not always thinking, oh, make that ball, make that ball. Oh, can I miss it? Oh no, I, I gonna make it. I may, may. You know, it's I concentrate on the, on the action I have to do. Mm. And it's and always the same. You have a consistent. Yeah, and routine. the ball making of the ball should be a logical result of that. Mm. So we got eight six seven. Eight six seven. You see, I, I get comfortable. I try to make a <laughs> try to make a prediction on the last three balls. Mm. I think he's scared mm. a little, so he yeah he went lower than he intended. So he has yeah. to do a little more work now. Hard to hold the cue ball now on the angle. Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> So he has to go, yeah, if it, if it would be a thinner cut, okay, then he can just uh, go a two rail speed mm -hmm. back and forth. But here with this kind of angle. Hmm. Do you think he'll go three or four or he'll hold it? Pardon me? Will he go around? That's the alternative. Or all around or slow it down as much as you can to mm. keep it near the long rail. But uh, to go all the way around, you need a certain speed, and this speed, yeah, the cue ball will hit the rail very close to the side pocket, if you mm. know what I mean. <laughs> I do, and I'm sure Torsten does too. Let's see what he does. He's uh, uh, I put that with reverse? Yeah, reverse to mm. shorten it up. You know, with this kind of angle, if you go for two rail speed, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it he will get a long break shot mm -hmm. probably he was just yeah let's go for the long break shot mm -hmm. before I do anything fancy here I do a fancy long break shot <laughs> so the interesting question here is how, how confident he's going to feel in the shot because you know if he's feeling very confident he may shoot it hard like usual but it'll tell us you know, if he's thinking a little bit defensively he may shoot it softer if he's worried about making the ball and not want to spread them out too much in case he misses so that Dennis wouldn't have an open table. We try, probably will try to play it very smooth, not soft, mm. not very hard mm -hmm. like he used to do it, just very smooth and he will get a pretty good result. He just have to concentrate to pot that ball mm -hmm. and yeah. Well, Torsten is an aggressive plays this game very aggressively. Oh. Uh, he was trying that yep. shot, shooting it very hard, like he's used to. Mm -hmm. it's maybe this was also the reason for his uh, decision to shoot mm -hmm. it hard. He's used to. And yeah, let's see how... I guess... Uh, no, it was 86. Uh, um oh, that Ruslan ran on Torsten? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now it's the other way around. But that's a good start. You know, now Dennis, and one of the challenging things about this is, you know, Dennis has been sitting for about 45 minutes now, just watching Torsten run up the score, and he comes to the table 84 balls down. 
He's a difficult position mentally and physically because he's cold. Right? He hasn't hit a ball in a while, so we'll see if he can jump off to a start here. Yeah, we got he got a nice rack, so a nice that's that's nice to start with something like that. If you are cold and you come to the table and you have to face major problems, mm -hmm. then it's uh, very hard. But here, yeah, you can find your rhythm. You can do some relaxed shots first, yeah. And of course, you are afraid to mess up something, making something <laughs> right. Um, especially if the table is in a ni ni nice layout like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have to concentrate on keep yourself out of uh, trouble, you know. Mm -hmm. It's so many times you had it when the rack is wide open and s suddenly you leave your cue balls frozen to a, some object ball and you can't hit another ball from there anymore. So usually Dennis plays with a glove on, but it looks like he's changed it up. Was he playing with one against you, or do you remember? I don't remember. Usually he wears a... No, he ha didn't have a glove, because he was using a powder, powder. talcum. Mm -hmm. They were really popular in the Philippines because of the humidity. Yeah, mm. and not so much. I don't know, but they have uh, also air conditioning, so... Mm -hmm. Back uh, in the days, also in the States, when the humidity was great like, uh, and there were no air conditioning, then powder was a big deal for pool players. Mm -hmm. Very important. In Europe, at the Euro Tour, example, uh, it's even uh, not allowed. It's banned because of the to mess. use uh, powder. Yeah, I know some players complain about it because of the mess. And it's taking his time here, being very deliberate. His pace in general is. You know, he, he got two pairs here, the, the 8, 15, the 3, uh, 4. They block each other. And uh, the, the other balls, you see the 14 or the 6, mm -hmm. they're all, you can't get a nice angle on them to break those little pairs off. Mm. And uh, so that's the trouble he got. So he want to use these little choices, or these little uh, shots. Like he got a salmon ball now, right? So when he uses this, or the 10 ball, he uh, has to make sure that he gets the perfect angle after that to continue. So does he has enough angle, for example, when he plays a seven to move the cue ball into the six so that he has an angle on the 14 ball to do something from there, mm -hmm. either way with a three, four, or eight, six, uh, eight, 15. So it's not probably, there wasn't, a, ca uh, wasn't a, a possibility to run into the six, so he just goes without. Just watch. <laughs> he's still got a problem. Now he's checking the angle on the six ball he might can get. With a six ball he might clear the eight away from the fifteen. He wants to remain the fifteen as a break shot on the other side also. the angle to play the six and clear the eight away from the 15 but after that there's not much left there's only a 10 ball left for or, or he's, or he's drawing away. drawing maybe into the three and four yes mm. drawing. 
That was nicely done. So now if he shoots the 11 ball, his, he can pocket yeah. the 8 ball in that corner pocket. Exactly. Still not very easy to get over there, I guess. But if he was uh, trying, like I said before, to go with the cue ball into the 8, mm -hmm. he would have the problem yeah, to come back from there to take care of the 3 and the 4. So he was doing good. But those are the... The, the thoughts you always have to uh, you're going through so you have constantly you have to do decisions 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 mm -hmm. so I, w I wonder that uh, pool compared to 1900 you know like you said when we had like 4,000 pool halls in New York mm -hmm. then um, why they not open, yeah, another 3,000 again, maybe, because uh, if you raise good pool players f for your companies, you raise uh, very good decision makers. It's true. I think it's the next, the next big trend. So all the old things keep coming back. So I think we're, we're going to bring pool back. Hopefully. This angle he got, he cannot go on the other side, probably. So he was even thinking of uh, going for the three ball first. Uh, so can he have a shot on the four? No. At least that's what I see when <laughs> out of that his little hand, the hand expression. Flip. Yeah, the, the, hand, the flip. hand flip. <laughs> the hand flip usually means no good. <laughs> <laughs> or need special spin. I don't think he's gonna take any chances down 84 to 11. He really needs to run some balls here. If he lets Torsten back to the table, he might not get another shot. Like he's gonna have to take the ten ball. Yeah. If the four ball doesn't go, what what else? So and with this little angle he got, he can go back um, on the right long rail. And three four. But he's still checking the four because the ten ball is not <laughs> not so sweet, right? It's a hard shot, and it's a harder shot when you've been sitting. So. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Exactly. Whoa. And I, I think Is that's that part of that's being, you know, not warmed up, it's sitting for a while. You know, and you can see Dennis is frustrated. And in this game, too, if your opponent does miss, you, you really need to punish them because, you know, if you let him right back to the table, it's, it's almost like letting him continue basically so Dennis only manages to make 11 let's see what Torsten can do here so we don't need a horoscope to don't uh, need a horoscope I predict that he's <laughs> <laughs> he's going to make these two balls and then whatever happens he's going to hit the break shot really hard. <laughs> That's my prediction. <laughs> and then next rack he's probably going to hit the break shot really hard. <laughs> Not easy to play position with those hangers in front of the pocket because you see the yeah, movement from the cue ball. If you shoot it harder, yeah. then uh, the spin doesn't take. He kind of died on the rail and he yeah. wound up. I think 
He's farther away than he wanted to be, but I still don't think this will be any problem for him. Hmm. You know, if it's if it just goes in, yes, it looks like obvious. Mm -hmm. But uh, we know he can. We, we just saw it before, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody can miss shot. No, true. Those those balls. Very true. I mean, except Torsen, of course. <laughs> except <laughs> Torsen. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. He's uh, he's also human, so it's thrilling. That's a very big decision maker here. I mean, making that break shot, he might go then over a hundred, which is high comfortable position for him. Sure. Ooh, did he did it. Dead in the pocket. Yes. Perfect. It was the right part of the pocket, excuse it me. It was it? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit off. A little bit off. <laughs> a little bit off. <laughs> Torsten playing with the Michael Volmer cue. Yes. Give it, got it back. He back. used to play with That's it. That's right. He won his first world championship with the Michael Vollmer Q in 2004 when he won the world nine ball. That was with the Vollmer Q. 2003. Three, sorry. Three. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He beat Alex Pagulain, right? And then Alex won it in 2004. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Torsten, two-time world nine ball champion. Even though he's primarily known for this game, I think. Do you think there's something in particular that makes the Germans so good at straight pool? We still play. Yeah, it's played more and more common in Europe, I think. Still, it's uh, as long as it's in officially in the sports agenda, mm -hmm. so everybody plays it in the league. I mean, um. everybody, lowest to the highest league, mm -hmm. and uh, on each official championship. If it's the regional championship uh, or the, the uh, country championship or the German championship, there's always eight ball, nine ball, ten ball, and straight pool. Mm. And those are the official games. And so, as long as we play it, we yeah, we are interested. In mm. it. <laughs> but it's a very close decision sometimes in the recent years that they not only for Germany but also for the whole Europe that uh, you know one time maybe the sports government comes together and make a decision mm, let's quit on straight pool mm -hmm. <laughs> or do this or that you know it's you never know mm. well I hope not so is he just deciding now he wants to hit the Twelve and the nine right now. Mm, not oh. possible. But to open these and then the twelve ball goes anyway. Mm. Now or later on. But if they qui would quit on straight pool, they would lose also mm, on the long run ability. I think because I think it's still very important to practice straight pool, even if there is no straight pool any tournament uh, left alive in the world, it would still make highly sense to practice it. <laughs> Why do you think that? What about straight pool? It, you think it makes you better at the other games also? Yes. I mean, of course you have to take uh, special training in uh, break shots, for example, in nine ball, ten ball, all those different breaks. You need a little bit more knowledge about uh, the banks and kicks, re-safeties and this and that. Mm -hmm. But you can concentrate on that for a while. But to keep your, once you have this ability, just to keep your game alive is a uh, straight pool. Mm. Because uh, think about the sportive way. In, in spo general, in sport, if you want to be good at anything, you have to do a lot of repeatings of your sporting movement, right? Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? How many balls you can uh, do or how many strokes you can do in straight pool per hour? Mm -hmm. And how many in one pocket? Right, right. And this is this may be one uh, reason 
why the Americans fall a little bit behind from a sporting point of view uh, to the Europeans. Mm. They don't play so many strokes per hour. <laughs> That's a good point. I never thought about it. I always just thought that from the perspective that and he wants us to come off the rail some a little more. Yeah. Uh, I, I always thought it from the perspective that nine ball doesn't require patterns. Pretty much just mm -hmm. sh shot making and mm -hmm. one ankle being mm -hmm. on the right side of the ball. Oh. No. He was trying to... Tried to cheat and mm. come off the rail a little too much there. He looked very happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's not happy, I'm sure. But it's nice to have a big lead, and he has a big lead. Okay, here he can just roll it in. Two rails, short, long, and he got an angle on the seven. Mm. It's not a first-class break shot, but... It'll work. Yeah. It'll work. And I always thought that you have to play patterns in eight ball, mm -hmm. shot making in both games, position play. Mm -hmm. More important to be more exact, I think, in this game. Mm -hmm. So it teaches you the elements you would need to be good at the other games, too. Yeah, in the beginning, also for beginners, it's... It's uh, easier to manage a game where you have so many possibilities uh, than to manage some impossible situation for a beginner in 9-ball or 10-ball mm. and just shoot at it as hard as you can and see right. what's, what's going to happen, right? right. <laughs> so there's also a reason to play it for development mm. in the beginning. So Dennis, taking a quick break. And we'll take a moment and, and thank our sponsors. You can see them up there. Uh, JP Tower Custom Cues, High Rock Promotions, Molinari, Predator, Cusco, uh, Aramith, Balls, Simona's Cloth, Tweeter Fiber Company, Carom Cafe. Brings you the American 14.1 Straight Pool Championship. Yeah. Don't forget, don't forget uh, the flags. Russia, Poland, <laughs> Albania, Germany, Finland, uh, Philippines, England, Israel, Austria, Russia. I'm England? This is not England. Is this England? No. Scotland? No. Not we sure about that. We, we <laughs> it's a, a mix. Very, <laughs> we have a very international field. <laughs> But it's great. Uh, it, it's great that people will come from all over the world and play in the event. Let's have a look in a program. We got a program here where all the players are uh, got their space, and we, so we can read something about Dennis Ocolo. Oh, I yeah. know the history from Torsten pretty uh, very well because from Germany. Oh, well, tell us about Torsten while I find Dennis here. So Torsten was starting like uh, when he was like 11 or something, but he became popular and uh, he, the first attention he was getting as a youth player when he was winning like youth championships uh, and, um, and as a youth player already won, one time he won an eight ball match against Ralph Suke, who was the totally number one back then and he will beat him like seven nothing. <laughs> so all the attention was on him, mm. and yeah, but uh, the international, totally international breakthrough he had with the World Championship in 2003. And I remember the chances of the bet. He was 1 to 125 to win that championship. Wow. And I would know his ability before because I played five years together with him on a team. Right. And uh, so I know it would be worse to bet maybe 20 pounds on him. Right. <laughs> so, so I did. And oh, and you I won I got it. <laughs> 125 times that. That's, uh, that's a good value. I don't think anybody would give you those odds anymore. <laughs> so he's in trouble. Uh, he has to shoot for a long... Nine ball there, it's mm. close, that's nice, Jacked but he has to go over the one ball and not touching it. Yeah, we're 
playing an all ball fouls here, so yes. if he touches anything with his cue, it's a foul, and he gives up the table. So we'll see. All right. Not uh, very nicely. But, oh, he has a 10 ball. So now you see, this looks like a very nice example. You've got a uh, break possibility from the 8 ball or the 12 ball, for example. In order to shoot those, you have to take care of the... If you try to break them with the 12 ball, you have to take care of the 6 first and the, and the 5, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to break them with the 8, you have to take care of the 5, 15, and then with the 8 from behind. And or he sees something else, but these are the first shots on my side. Mm -hmm. So sooner or later he has to go for one or the other mm. to open them. No. Is he going to go into them now, you think? Mm. Maybe here. a little bit, oh. you know. Sometimes you, yeah, as long as you have those insurance with the five ball in front of the pocket, you can, you can touch the rack a little bit here and there without taking too much risk and shooting too hard into the eight. So in this remaining rack, you see you have a clear shot on the 11 from the other side. Mm -hmm. So sooner or later, you might try to find a way on that, on that side. Yeah, I don't think he got the separation there that he was hoping for. He hit the 8 a little bit thick, and it kind of bobbled in the pocket, mm -hmm. I think. I'm not sure what he was. Do you think he was trying to leave it for the 15 and just yeah. went too far? But I then this wasn't a good job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what he was. I mean, okay. Dennis, I think, struggling a little bit, you know, with his rhythm, maybe a little confidence after missing that ball. You know, it's hard to get back. Maybe the three stroke. ball get automatic. Uh, yeah, from here you see it very good. Three ball, he got an angle to go out for the 12, and from the 12 he can try to get a perfect position on whatever of the opening ball, open balls. From the 12 now, he can draw back to the 11, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then he can open the, or release the 14 and 2 a little bit. But then he still has the other cluster, and I don't... He still got the other cluster. I think any of those go anywhere, so... Welcome to straight pool. Well <laughs> 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 problem after problem. <laughs> yeah, you raise if you... If you, um, if you sponsor pool players, you sponsor problem uh, solver. problem creator depends on how you look at it I guess I mean if there's a safety game going on <laughs> yes uh. I like to create lots of problems <laughs> so that was nice he went into them there it looks like the four will go now so should be okay nice would be now to let the cue ball run softly into the 14 ball maybe nudge it to the right make a break shot this would be super perfect, but just to get a sh good position on the floor, but he's doing different, mm. harder, and yeah. to make sure to release those two balls. It's difficult to be that exact, too, and hit mm. one side of the ball. I think now, you now you see a perfect example, that the one and the four, they, they really look like Together. one ball and the four mm. ball goes into the side pocket as a break shot. Mm -hmm. So first side. And you can create this ability of seeing patterns mm. right away with the game I just mentioned before. Mm. If you use the rails or not, it doesn't matter that much anymore, but it creates the, the, the sight. Mm -hmm.
I don't think he's going to be doing that. <laughs> Dennis has a different plan. Yeah. But he's not a natural straight foot player, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, that's not played in the Philippines, really. So. I remember when he got introduced to the game, like three years ago at the Derby City. And he was uh, taking his first attempts on the, on the, you know, when they had to make those runs, mm -hmm. the 10 tries, you know. So he break the whole first rack of balls. Everything was open, and he then he just turned around and made sure, asking Dennis Walsh or whoever was in charge back then, he said, uh, he was asking, and now I can play any ball? <laughs> and they say, any ball? Oh, any ball! <laughs> <laughs> and he was really excited. <laughs> Philippines, they play a lot of 15 ball rotation. So, in that, you it's like playing nine ball, but you play with all 15. So, that's a, such a difficult game. Maybe he's used yeah. to that. So, he, he just had a different side, right? He wanted to uh, uh, carom the 14 ball out as a break shot. Yeah, Still, it would be hard to get on that, though. I mean, I don't because he just didn't saw this one and four. Right. right? I thought he, he was going to play it soft and then try and get an angle in the 13 mm. to pocket the 13 in the corner and then nudge the four out. Mm. But mm. that's that's not what he did. So he's um, certainly making it like, difficult on himself. I think your way was was much easier. <laughs> That might At be least he was giving me a compliment after he was beating me yeah. and telling me that it really looked uh, very controlled, everything I did. <laughs> that is a nice thing to say. Leaving it in the rack, huh? Yeah. Gives him options now. He can, he can choose uh, his favorite angle. Just the distance is limited. But he's a good shot maker, that's the advantage, right? In nine ball, mm -hmm. ten ball, good shot maker. Yeah, I, I try and be as close as possible to the break ball. That helps. Like within a foot. You know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this, I don't, I'd probably have to play safe here, I think. Really? <laughs> <Kid>. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I was thinking you are a tough opponent <laughs> because you have the safety battle every rack then. <laughs> when I checked the, the statistics, probably all your opponents had a very bad average, right? Oh, extremely <laughs> bad. <laughs> because you forced them always to go into a safety battle right. in each rack. Right. <laughs> The two ball for sure. Six might go as well. Yeah. But I guess to roll the two ball in or stun it a little. Uh, mm -hmm. Get an angle on the ten ball. Right. And just make a little contact on the back of the remaining rack. should still be able to hit them from here, no problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, I got a six ball. He prefers the six. Yeah. What was 
an interesting choice. Not much of an angle on the three ball. This is trouble. So you might shoot a stop shot on the three ball to have a certain shot on the eight mm -hmm. in the head corner pockets. need to cheat the pocket big. Pretty much a stop shot, but what? the one ball here, you think? I mean, it looked like he was playing for the seven balls. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. So, then it's struggling to find his patterns here a little bit. You see the difference? I mean, just the one ball size uh, snapshot mm -hmm. between it's just the one ball. Oh, he got the one ball. Thin cut all around the table. Yeah, this shot wasn't, uh, there wasn't much uh, danger because of the two balls in front of the pocket. Right. I don't know if he can still make contact with a rack. I think he'd have to be angle. on the other side of the eight ball to make contact, really. So then he might just let it roll and he's checking the angle now to open it with a seven or eleven. This 11, he cannot open much because the he can just open the 13, which is already open. So it must be a 7. Ah. He got this flat of an angle that he still can open something with the 11. He said still can't. Huh? He said he still can't, or? He can. He mm. can now because he runs into the 13. Mm -hmm. And then after the 13, he should hit the 9. Enough follow to move the other balls just a little bit, which should be enough. Mm. I think he's going to have to run into them again, don't you think? Or shoot the, shoot him up table. The head corner pocket. Mm -hmm. Filipinos are very flexible, you know? Very, fle <laughs> very <laughs> flexible in their patterns. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that when leaving Cortez and won the World, uh, World Stable Championship the one year. And just I could never figure out what he was <laughs> going to do next. He'd just make it up as he would go along. <laughs> Two break shots, 14 and 7 balls. So decision makers have to start a job exactly there. I just don't want to predict what he's going to leave because we haven't been right yet. <laughs> the good thing is if you have two options, if you have two break shots, mm -hmm. one on the left and on the right side, you can keep that option open mm -hmm. even till the very end. 
because you can always play from one break shot position to the other break shot. Mm. Looks like that's what he's going to do. Although, if he shoots the nine now, he's going to run into the 14, so he may shoot the seven. And if he got a good angle, he can just float over for position on the 14. there in the end. So. All right, Valde, Valde wrecking balls. I'm gonna make a selfie, it's all about that, huh? Because when we do commentary, I need a selfie for my Instagram account. This is, we have to do this, it's modern days, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Documented. So you can maybe tomorrow it's up on my Instagram account. So what's your Instagram handle? My name, Ralph Eckert, if you search for it. So it's this Ralph space G dot space Eckert. Whatever, you can find it. Well, Sh yeah, shouldn't yeah. be a big task. <laughs> yeah. So you see the difference in style there because I think we know Torsten would have hit that. About five or fourteen times as hard. Fourteen one times. Fourteen, fourteen <laughs> one times as hard. Uh, and you see that he didn't get a particularly good result, so I think he's going to have to shoot the two ball. I think two ball would be aggressive way, or if you the alternative would be the one. And do just a little bit, you know, let the cue ball run maybe into the nine. Or you put some spin on it, making sure to pass the nine, or even to pass the 13. Mm -hmm. You certainly get a shot on the 13 on this or that side, but not sure, you know. It's so he's checking his options already. Mm. That would be, of course, if it works, it would be the favorite shot. Everything is open, right? Mm -hmm. The two ball. So, but the one ball is pretty sure. And yeah, touching the rack a little bit from behind. With inside spin, he hit it even more solid than just the outside part. But not well rewarded. Mm -hmm. I see only the combination, maybe three, five combination. Normally you don't like that, but it sits in front of us. You know, it's very, very close. Three, five. He can be sure to get have a position after that. Still hesitating a little bit because I, I don't know, maybe he has to hit it a little bit on the right and so he has to take care of the cue. Yeah, you see, mm -hmm. a little bit on the right, he has to take care of the cue ball also. Yeah, it's a difficult shot anytime you hit a combination off angle like that, but yeah. very nice. And he got a seven ball for the security. Two ball anyway and 50. think about just getting rid of the two here? Not ne 
necessarily. So where can you attack those remaining balls? Maybe the three ball got uh, space between the four and the ten, right? Then it would be a possibility to attack after the seven. I was I thinking about trying to go over, shoot the seven and shoot the nine. Yes. And then shoot the three. Nine and three, or here, look at this. Oh you got a maybe a shot goes, on the ten, the ten went. and then the, nine, the eight. Is the twelve ball on? I don't think so. No, eight's in the way. Finding your way, making decisions, re, uh, solve problems. So what a fantastic game. Isn't what that? a fantastic huh? game. Every Execution. CEO should take care to have uh, 20 tables in each of his companies. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> be a lot happier about going to work. See the eight ball went there, so so he might try to keep the three ball as a break shot. But when you see on the other side, if you leave the twelve and thirteen at the end, mm -hmm. it's also nice. You see, seven, twelve, thirteen is a nice mm -hmm. uh, end pattern. But of course, the three is a way better break shot. But the end pattern, especially now, is not clear because now he might go exactly for this three ball or six, six ball. Yeah, I guess from his point of view, the three ball is the most favorite break shot. Four ball also. Yeah, the three ball is a little high. Four ball low, but and there's no, there's no shot before the four ball, right? If right. If there is something near the other side pocket, mm -hmm. then this would uh, give, would make the four ball probably the favorite break mm -hmm. shot. So the thirteen would be, yeah, the third choice maybe, but which makes it attractive to me is the easiness at the end. Right. At, at seven twelve. Right. You can't say, in, in, in straightforward, you can't say really, oh, this is right, this is wrong, because right. uh, so many options, different styles of play. So you can also, so there's also a creative part in the game. So if we talk a little more about that, creative for this, this, you know, we got, uh, we, we certainly get a big appointment with the leading CEOs in the country, right? Oh yeah. Pretty soon. It's a good game for kids too, I feel like. Teach discipline. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He's okay, he's doing nice. He worked his way nicely through. Mm -hmm. So he wants to end up on the same angle that he's on right now. Mm. You can see where he just put his cue. He would be there, but just a little bit farther back. So, see how his speed is here. Still leading 100 to 54. Dennis, I think, on a 43 ball run right now. Did he start at 11? Yeah.
you think that Dennis is playing more slowly than usual to try and throw Torsten off his mm. rhythm? Looks looks pretty much the same. Same. Mm -hmm. Of course, if he ha would have less problems in the different racks, mm. and sometimes he creates some problems on his Creates own. <laughs> 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 um, then uh, he would probably can go a little bit faster, but not much though. Mm. I guess he's pretty okay in his routine right now. So with the 14 you can already get maybe a nice angle on the two ball to open the rack or he can also use, uh, draw it a little and use the two ball to get a nice angle on the 4 or 15 ball on the other side. Player's choice. to take care directly with the two ball. Hmm. Not much messing around. Open them now. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have a lot of choice. So I was wondering why he was debating over that so much. But mm. Didn't expect mm. him to hit them that softly, did you? Yeah, no, that's right. You, you could have got something better out of that. Was expecting the same anyway. So I don't know if the 15 can pass the fork. Doesn't look like. If this doesn't work, then he has to go for something hmm, pretty difficult, like the eight ball across the table. It doesn't look like the 15 goes from this angle, does it? It's hard to see, but we'll have to shoot that eight. That center. So did you find a page with the... Oh, I did. So I'll just read what it says in the program. It says, little can be said that is not already known of the prowess of this great modern-day champ from the Philippines. In 2015, he won the U.S. Open 8-ball, the Super Billiards Expo Player Championship, 4th in the Derby City 9-ball, 10th in the U.S. Open 10-ball, 9th at the World 14.1, and 5th in the Derby City 14.1 Challenge. In 2014, Dennis finished 2nd in the U.S. Open 9-ball, 1st in the Derby City 14.1, and 1st in the U.S. Open 1-pocket. Congratulations, Dennis, and thank you for making your fourth visit to our tournament. His sponsors are Bugsy Promotions and Tiger Products. So, now we know. Now we know. And uh, Dennis, I think, has finished as high as fourth in this tournament. So, he always does well and proceeds into the late stages. I really like, uh, I mean, how was your experience? But I really like this uh, computer system and uh, how they keep score mm. during the match. Yeah, it was very easy, touch screen, yeah. and you can see the, when you, when you hear, you s when you see the screen, it's very easy uh, to handle it. The way, the smartest thing so far I saw 
Mm. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was nice. And typically, you use the beads or paper counters to keep score and straight mm -hmm. pull. So it's nice to have a computer program that, that does it for you really easily and calculates all the scores and keeps track of the fouls. And the Cusco team total statistics came over to Korea from Korea just for this tournament and developed this program just for us. It's the first. Uh, system of its kind, so we they should um, they should go with this system to Europe because there they play <laughs> maybe a lot more straight pool, and he is in trouble now. Looks like. Do you think he can see the five? Maybe the five. Yeah, from here it looks like he's not in trouble. Yeah, if the it five looks is okay. okay. Yeah. And from there. Your father is gone. So he is he gone, left. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he left. He, he left the building. Or so the the space is open. Don Polo is still sitting over there. Also played in our tournament. Mm -hmm. So if he's still thinking, then he might have some trouble with the five ball. Maybe need some little curve or some spin. I know why he was hesitating. He wanted to try maybe to run con with some control into the six or one maybe to get a break shot. Mm -hmm. He got one. I mean, if you cannot create something out of the remaining uh, balls, you can use, I would use the four ball. Mm -hmm. And then it would be nice to have the 13 maybe as a last ball. Mm -hmm. He but he's taking care of the four he ball pretty soon. He doesn't <laughs> seem to accept <laughs> the. He seems to really want the, the more traditional break shots, the top of the right yeah. break shots. So he Maybe does a lot of work to carry the cue ball now into the, into to this to know? try and get them. I mean, I think, especially for beginning players, you shouldn't be so picky about the break shot because to do so much work. Mm. You know, if you can accept what the table gives you a little bit more than, you know, if he had left the four ball, then he now he has to create something because he really doesn't have anything as a break. And it now. requires a lot to create something right, here. Right? right. I mean, I don't yeah. know if the 13 ball works. It's pretty low on the, mm -hmm. on the rack, but maybe it does. But mm -hmm. the 10, uh, I mean, sort of. But that's the way he plays. You know, right. he mm -hmm. could have made it. Uh, could have. Uh, find a way, uh, way much easier way. Maybe he thinks the game is too easy and he just has to make it harder on himself. <laughs> I met so many Nymo players when they got introduced them to straight pool and they were very good Nymo players. Mm -hmm. And when they played straight pool, they really it drives them crazy because they can, they can play any ball, but... <laughs> mm, so they don't know <laughs> what to do, yeah. I mean, they know, but... Uh, S sooner or later, they 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 stuck or get in, into trouble, you know. So because you can play any ball, it's uh, a lot of outsiders think that's easy. Mm. Mm, I don't know, but even if they are right, then mm -hmm. it's easy for both players, and then it makes it <laughs> as as hard as any other game to to win against the opponent. Right? Sure. He's going to want to get a lot of angle for this. Mm. So That'll work. It's, it's pretty low, yeah. I mean, be able he, to won't hit the corner he, ball, he right? won't follow that shot. I guess. He will not follow that <laughs> shot. <laughs> Two more racks will be very close. Yeah, 
Maybe he'll change it up and hit this one hard. Okay, it's a two hard. The cue ball stays too long on the tangent line, and the tangent line goes. Yeah, I don't know if the tangent line hits the rack. Mm. Needs, a he needs draw to draw this. Oh, yeah, barely, yeah. He good. just he grazed the two. He hit about half that ball. All right. So you hesitate to read the page from Torsten because it's a little longer page, right, in the program. Oh, I can, re <laughs> I can read Torsten's page. We're getting the insider scoop from you. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you inside scoop, the inside. How many times he won the straight pool world championship? Five. Five times. At least four out of them. He was winning them with my vest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the magic vest. The magic vest. <laughs> Does he have it on now? Maybe that's no, why. No, no, no vest. That's probably why he missed that shot. You know. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and read that one. Dennis is picking this out. It says we are. Truly honored to once again have Thorsten as one of our tournament's premier participants. There are a few who could deny that he's the finest 14.1 player of our era, if not the best all-around player in the world. In 2015, Thorsten won the Dragon 14.1 championship for the fourth time, as well as the World 10 ball. In 2018, Thorsten won his fifth 14.1 title. And congratulations to Thorsten. In 2006, he won both the World 14.1 title and the IPT 8 ball open. First prize, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. In two thousand and five, he's the ACA Open Nine Ball Champion, European Straight Pool Champion, and he also won the World Nine Ball Championship in two thousand and three and two thousand and fourteen. Thirteen? Wasn't it thirteen? It was thirteen or four? I thought it was fourteen. Thirteen? It says three fourteen. And 13. But it was thirteen. It doesn't say. I was doing that one from memory. Oh. You're right. Thirteen. Because he also won this tournament in thirteen back-to-back. Back. Uh, his titles around the world are legendary. He's played our championship a dozen times, and it's a great honor to lend his support. Sponsor Cyclop Balls, Kamui, and Ball Marquise. All right. So Dan is still working his way through this rack. He's still doing his thing here. So obviously, uh, I mean, he got also a three ball and a 15 ball. 15 ball probably first choice. And, uh, not much angle on the six. Now he has trouble to come back down into the table. Let's see. He wanted, or he needed to go to the ten ball, and from there he got a nice uh, possibility to get a shot on the three ball, so mm -hmm. he can clear the three, five, twelve. Then his way is clear, right? A little flat. He might end up going forward. He played that rail first. Wow. Mm. Wasn't expecting that. He may so run into the five and the three. Seven, ten. You mean when he goes in the middle? Mm. Uh, yeah, possible. All right. So 
So you see, he constantly changed his plan. Constantly yeah. changed his plan. I think now he's going to have to shoot up table. I mean, again, that this is a difficult end pattern. No, yeah, and no easy shots here. And even though he constantly changes his plan, this and that, this, yeah, I don't. We, we don't want to sound disrespectful because he's such a big caliber of player. No, I mean, of course not. He's right. He can right. handle all those situations. He's on a nice run, so. Omega Billiards. And uh, what kind of sponsors does he is showing to us here on his shirt? It's Omega Billiards and mm, I thought he was sponsored by Tiger Tips. Mm -hmm. Shot. This or that way, if he goes <laughs> five ten or ten five, it requires some power here and there. Absolutely. I think if five and then a little easier to get. Ten ball, you can roll a little bit more, probably two rails. But mm. More rolling than forcing. Right. See what he's more comfortable with, the 10. That's tough, I think. And still we got the rolling part. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. What do you know? No, he won the also the uh, bank pool challenge at the Derby City, right? Right. Yeah, so that's why not? I don't, uh, I don't <laughs> why not show your skills? <laughs> let's, a let's ask him. I don't, I don't think he wants to bank that. See if he goes two rails or one no, rail. He's doing different thing, yeah. Getting his draft. No choice, he has to go for it. Two times long rail. Oh, we missed it. Mm. Missed it. Hit it thick. And he tried to draw it. I wouldn't try that. I, I would stay, would like to stay below the side pockets. Mm. Do you think he was worried about scratching and so tried to come the other side? Or? I don't know. There, there is no, not a big danger of scratching there. Mm. Yeah, I don't know why he would have on the ball like that. I mean, if you go farther up table, you have more margin for error mm. as far as your speed. Yeah. But Torsten will probably go now for three rail follow. No, also low right. So he also tries basically the same thing. Like. Thank you. Nice shot there. Nice mm, speed. Yeah. Very good, and he takes the time off. He takes a timeout. I'm also going to take a timeout. My father, Michael Frank, is going to join Ralph in the booth here. So, excuse right. me, everybody. So, welcome, welcome, uh, Michael Frank. This is family business going on here. <laughs> 
family <laughs> business, right? Yes, exactly. Darren's my son. Yeah. Which I occasionally have to admit. So, good to see you, Mr. Eckert. Good to see you. And you just had a uh, birthday yesterday, right? I did, I did. We don't need to go into all the details. <laughs> 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 after, a certain, after a certain number of birthdays, you just want to forget the rest of them. You know? <laughs> All right, so, but uh, you are a very, ex uh, very experienced skate pool player, don't you? Yes, I um, I've been playing straight pool for 60 years or more. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people can say that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the highest number I've heard when I asked somebody, how long did you already play billiards? The answer was 70 years from one guy, and he was well over his 90s. There you go. <laughs> well, that's what I aspire to. But... Um, uh, this has been an interesting match. Um, certainly, you have contrasting styles of play. Yes. You have uh, uh, Thorsten Holman, who's uh, uh, just um, a, a very quick shooter, and a, uh, you know, once he uh, oh, look at this guy. <laughs> once he decides oh, yeah. a, a pattern of play, then he uh, commits to it and just goes about his business and, and then you have of course uh, the style of, uh, of uh, Dennis or Paolo, which is much much more deliberate deliberate <laughs> deliberate all right. yes all right that's the word deliberate and it also has the advantage of keeping your opponent in the chair so that if you're uh, if you miss your opponent has to come out of the chair a little tighter than he might have been if you were playing more quickly. Yeah, yeah. So it's. Uh, but I don't think that Dan is really a slow player. No. You don't do think he's slow? I, do I, you think he's a slow player? I, I think he's. Yeah. yeah very slow. <laughs> Myself. But we have a horse race, at 100 to 81. Mm -hmm. But Thorsten got a lead, and he's on the table. Yes. So. So. I mean, it would be if it would be the other way around. You might favor even the guy who got uh, yeah, 81, 81, but he's on the right, table, right? right? Yes. No. And the way Thorsten, Thorsten is playing, you would you would expect him to get it, get going here. If he's keeping his average, he's running out now. Because his average is 50 yes, balls. Yes, exa his average is 50 <laughs> balls, right? Exactly. Whoa, this was not a safety shot. No. <laughs> Actually, I haven't seen him play safeties that much. He usually will shoot if yes. he has the alternative. Mm. So is, is that, since you're both from Germany, is that uh, kind of the way you learn the game? Unless you... Unless you really have uh, yeah, an Germany. impossible situation, you shoot. In Germany, safeties are not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> joking. <laughs> I, I know that. I know that. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, you know, some people given the choice between a safety and a, uh, playing a hard shot will take the safety every time. Uh huh. Um, yeah. And I just didn't know if it's characteristic of just Thorsten's style that he seems to never take the safety. <laughs> Or whether it's, you know, just... It might be. It's, it's certainly part of Torsten's style. He's an offensive player. He likes to go for the balls. He has the power to go for anything which is possible on the table to go for. That's one part. And the other part is uh, the way we learn straight pool. Uh, my being real insider is um, when we play straight pool and we do it on a regular basis is um, that uh, we use those paper sheets right? and, then we, and then we use those pa paper sheets then um, we always go or not going for it but at the end there in the beginning there were also rankings in average average ranking you know, how, oh this guy should this season like 15 balls uh, in average and the other one just 10 so they had even rankings for it so in order you want to go high in the rankings, you want to shoot for a high average. And so that's also maybe favors your decision to go for, 
offensive shot rather than to go for a safety shot. And in America, they don't use any those shields, right? They just use those, how do you call it? Those, uh, the beads. The beads? Yes, yeah. the beads. So nobody sees how many innings you need, right? And, uh, and when nobody sees the innings, you get judged uh, by how high you beat your opponent. Oh, I see. Right? Yes, I see. And, but if you have the sheet on your table and somebody walks in and says hello, the first thing is he looks at a sheet and sees how many innings, innings you, you play. Yeah. play. So um, what kind of quality the game is already. Right. So that's a different judge from somebody well, who's coming from outside. It's a much more accurate representation of how you play. So if, if two people are at 100 and one person got there one inning and one person got there in 10 <laughs> innings, there's a lot of difference in how they're playing. <laughs> I, yeah, I understand. I, I understand that. Um, but let, let me ask you a question. Um, given that you've written a number of successful books on pool, um, early in this rack, Thorsten had a lot of balls where he is now. But he decided to go um, up to down table to, to clear off the few balls there. Mm -hmm. Why would he do that? Why, would he, why wouldn't he just clear off the balls that were right around them and then go down as opposed to going down and then clearing off the balls? And now he, I don't know exactly what situation you mean. I, I should have pointed out earlier. <laughs> I, I should have pointed. But I think now that I see it, I, I think it's because it gives him more control around the balls that are near the break shot. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the reason he left them there to go play the other balls first. Yeah, yeah. Because now he... I mean, normally you send... When, when the rack is quite open, you see the first thing you have inside is the last three balls before the break shot. And we, when you see this pattern, then you just take care of the other balls, right? Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, uh, but that's interesting because it shows how far ahead he's thinking. <laughs> you know, to leave five or six balls mm -hmm. to go play three balls down table or up table. Um, no, you have to be thinking pretty far ahead to know that that your pattern's going to include the, all those all those balls to get to the break shot. We call it to go to go backward, uh, thinking uh, from from the end. To the, to the beginning. beginning, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's pretty advanced to be able to do that, actually. And then to know you can put the cue ball in line with the shots you want. I mean, that's. Uh, but it so, here you got uh, another pretty offensive break shot here. He's drawing it again. It won't reach the head rail this time, I wouldn't say, because he was hitting the upper ball from the two balls first, and this forces the cue ball to go downwards. You so if you me? hit the top two balls on the rack, it goes forward? I mean, no. Usually when you go with the cue ball, when the cue ball hits the rack, it hits the rack between two balls, right? Yes. So if it hits the lower ball first, then it goes up table to the to the head zone. If it hits the upper ball first, it goes down to the lower part of the table. Oh, okay. Right. Always the, the inside, of course, if it hits you know, they're always between two balls. And sometimes it hits the one of those balls of the rack so f solid full that it won't hit, its, the cue ball won't hit its neighbor ball. Then that's the third possibility. Then uh, this break shot is hard to predict. Still a good break shot, but harder to predict where it goes. You got a big number of break shots, possible break shots over here, right? So which one do you think he'll pick? I mean, Keep it clear, it would be uh, the f 15 probably. 13 6 now. Not necessarily 6, he can go with the 10 ball now and clear the 3 ball a little bit out of the way. But that 
what he's thinking about because it makes a big difference on which side you're going to hit the three ball and does it make sense at all? Can this cause any trouble or not? So when somebody, uh, I know you, you ran a hundred today. <laughs> uh, when you're when you're running hundreds and hundreds of balls, which is Thorson's done in this tournament for sure, yeah. um, what what is he thinking about when he's playing shot after shot after shot? Is it is his mind just totally one hundred percent exactly on what he's doing? That's a lot of concentration. That's a lot of concentration, but um, if you play on a high level. I would say um, if you play with 100% concentration every ball, uh, you wouldn't have the stamina to go through a big tournament like this um, or to play several matches in a row um, successfully. And so it says that um, you got better results or best results if you can work with 60-70% of concentration and only if you come into difficulties raise up your concentration 100% oh, I see. and then you try to come back in your rhythm that's why you have to build up a rhythm a routine so that you can go by autopilot also for a certain number of balls this is like when you are in a flow right? then you can really play in a pretty fast rhythm, maybe 12, 15 seconds. And uh, if you have to put in 100% concentration, then you are in straight pool, you are on 20 or 20 plus seconds per ball. Well, another question for an average player like me. If I'm playing through a rack, it doesn't matter what it is, any game, and 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 I I get out of line or I, the, the cue ball rolls way past where I would like it to be, now I have a really tough shot. Where before I had a pretty easy layout. Mm -hmm. So m my instinct is just to think, to kind of panic and think, mm -hmm. this is a really tough shot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like. If I miss it, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a negative pattern of thinking. Mm -hmm. a negative is, pattern is, of thinking. Right. What do you think about, or what does Thorsten think about when that happens? Um, well, in the in the beginning, you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to uh, talk it nice to you. I mean, like, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> oh, I like it. No, you can you can uh, be realistic and say, damn, I messed that up, <laughs> and I could have made it easier, but. Look at it. It's, it's, it's. I can, I can still handle that if I go for this, this, and that. Yeah, I can, I can come out of that. And then you get kind of interested, and then you go for it. Okay. You know, you, it's just oh, I'm, I'm out of uh, a line, uh, create a problem, but interesting. <laughs> you know, uh, it's realistic, uh, it's still positive. So it's like solving a problem. Yeah. Like, uh, looks like he really want to keep his uh, average here. He cannot beat my average from the last game. I had an average of 61, but Ooh. lost. <laughs> that was against Dennis, right? That was against Dennis. I, I watched yes. that game, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I saw that game. But oh. the way the, the, the play, the level of play, generally speaking, has been as high as any I've seen in many of the straight pool tournaments I watched, level of play overall. Yes. I mean, it's hard to defend against everybody can run 100 ball. It almost, you know, uh, it's amazing how many 100 ball runs have been in this tournament or more. Yes, yes, absolutely. I was frightened also when I came in. I was so frightened, you know, <laughs> that, that I, I, I played horrible the first games because <laughs> so much respect for all the players and the quality of play. and. Uh, Slowly, I was catching up my game. Um, yeah, it's we have we have a lot of Europeans over here. Yes, you do, and, and uh, they play a lot of straight ball. And they play a lot of and straight. And they play it real well. They like it. <laughs> yeah, they, they like they it. play it real well. <laughs> yeah, real well. And, uh, yeah. There's no 
no doubt about that. I don't know why it's so popular in America to play different games like Bankroll or One Pocket. One Pocket is very popular in the States, right? Yes. So it creates a very s smart and very good strategy players, very good strategy thinking, right? But uh, um, yeah, but it makes me wonder why not using all six pockets of the table, right? <laughs> well, I, I, I think, <laughs> well, a lot of the reason people I know switch to one pocket is um, it's in a certain way it, it's more strategic but you also don't have to make the ball <laughs> so you even know, if you it, miss it looks like uh, no, no, you did no, something no, no, smart I mean, if, you, if you get it close <laughs> to the pocket and hide your opponent it, it's yeah. a, it, it has a it, it has a different result than any other game if you yeah, miss the ball yeah. in any other game you're really yeah, pretty messed and up, in one yeah. pocket you're trying to miss the ball half the time so uh -huh. it's it really is a different, uh, different. Uh, yeah, I know, totally different. Yeah, uh, just a different, game. different game altogether. I always felt, uh, even though my level of play never got too high, I, I always, I always felt that it was a great benefit to have learned in, in my my time in my generation we learned straight pool first. I mean, mm -hmm. that was the game we played to learn all the other games. <laughs> that's, and that's I, I, I found that to be, you know, a terrific advantage in learning the other games because I already, I already knew a lot about the cue ball and bumping into balls and making shots. And it, it comes up in every game, nine ball, 10 ball, doesn't really matter, rotation, any rotation game, that, that's a big part of it. I agree completely, absolutely. It's a faster learning process also because you have a, uh, you got alternatives, you got possibilities. Uh, in the other games, sometimes, yeah, you messed up if you don't have the certain uh, player playing abilities already, right, as a beginner. So, then you shoot a lot of shots with no hope. But yeah, you can always have some idea, right, what to shoot next. And, uh, yeah. And of course, especially in younger years when you start, you uh, make just more, more strokes per hour in this game, so more repeatings. And when you get want to get good at, if you want to get good at your sport, right, you have to do a lot of repeatings, whatever it is. And uh, the most repeatings per hour you're gonna make in straight pool because of the rhythm of the game, also. So. If you think about 100,000 balls per year, that's easier, or 100,000 strokes per year, that's easier to achieve in straight pool than in one pocket, where you think a lot. Yes. It makes you a good thinker, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Just the, the, the complexity of what he has to do right here seldom comes up in any rotation game, actually. <laughs> Yeah. to work through these balls yeah, you know yeah. he, he has to have a plan a, a lot of people in the beginning uh and even a lot of people who don't know a lot about pool but watch some of it uh it looks like it's a a, a random game because you can shoot any ball you want anytime you want mm -hmm. but it's actually anything but a random game <laughs> and it's a very precise game in terms of what what the play is yeah uh, but also your opponent has the same you know uh, if, even if it's more easy, because you have so many options, your opponent has, it's easy for your opponent as well, so it's the same, it's a, it's a challenge, right? Yes, it's a challenge. And, um, yeah, but it's not, I want to make the discussion not so much about that this is the best game or that is the best game, no, I think that uh, that way that you can get something out of every game which makes you stronger in your favorite game. Oh no, I agree totally. Whatever it is. I, I agree totally. Certain skills are, in every game, certain yes. skills are, the skills that are, are different in every, yes. certain, or they're different in every game. If you want to get smarter in strategy, yeah. Yeah. Take a look at one pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to get uh, better uh, stroke and feeling for bank shots, play bank pool. If you uh, want to get good at patterns, play straight pool. If you want to find your way, you know, and uh, or if you want to make a lot of repeatings of your stroke, and in nine ball, yeah, you got this. 
the one, the two, the pattern is there, but you have to find how to manage it. Yes. Right? To com come from A to B. Yes. Every game teaches you something. And the, the, the distances are, the distances between sh shots are uh, probably slightly different, slightly longer maybe, uh, mm -hmm. because you, you just worry about the right angle. So now he's on uh, 43, seven more balls to go. Yeah, looks good from here. <laughs> looks good from here. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Might even look good for me from here. So All here we way. got his sponsor, Cycloballs, Falmer Cues and Kamui brand. And <laughs> he got the golden Kamui logo, you know, which gets o is only available from Kamui for world champions. So before we leave, uh, what it, wh what's the name of your most recent book? Uh, where can our readers uh, obtain a copy? The recent book in English I, st uh, I have is uh, still uh, The Final Freedom, Reflections of a Master Student. And yeah, you can mm -hmm. contact me by social media and uh, I can send it from Germany because not many, mm -hmm. I don't have a big, uh, how do you say? Uh, Oh, look at the Q1, look at the Q1. And oh, it's no. Gone. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Oh, man. Oh, I thought we were almost out of the booth. <laughs> Headed for a beer at the bar, you know? <laughs> Not to be. Look at that. He was doing that on purpose. I was right in the middle of my uh, campaign of promoting the book, and then he scratches. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, he has an opponent here that can run out. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I know that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. So that's a really uh, sort of an incredible way to scratch, actually. The cue ball went through the whole rack. Didn't it? Yes, it was. I would have loved to see that again in the slow motion, how the cue ball could find his way in that pocket. I mean, rarely you see to scratch, I mean, sometimes it happens that you scratch in the pocket where you shoot the, sp the break shot in, right? But uh, not on the other side. Yes, right. I, I, that's, that was just a, a fluky event, as they say. Uh, but it doesn't matter, because your opponent's back at the table, and uh, 60, what does he need, 69 balls, is well mm. within reach of uh, a player of Dennis's caliber. Mm. From his average, he still needs three innings. <laughs> you see, the Europeans are always thinking in average. Yeah, no, I see it. I see it's 27.0, uh, 27 right? But his high run is 70, so if you just repeat his high run, he already did in this game, he's out. So it's totally open, this match, again. So 15 ball, get a nice angle on the three to take care of the remaining cluster, maybe. Maybe. Yes. I'm happy. He's not always following whatever I <laughs> predict. <laughs> well, he has so much talent. It's, um, you know, his patterns might be a little different than what you suspect, but he has so much talent, he can work he through it. He can do, he can handle a lot of difficult situations. Yes, yeah, uh, he's very good player. requires situations where, uh, which require a lot of uh, shot making or curves or this or that, yeah. Here he's trying to just slide it. Oh, there you go. Combination, Put a combination. Combination. That was a pretty good shot there. You see how easily the 7 14 is fine, but just a little difference, and you can create a problem over there, right? Yes. But now he got it fine, and if he looks for a break shot, he can, uh, he can leave the, th the 8 ball. 
is a little bit high, the eight as a break shot, but still okay to me. Or would you try to create something else? The only alternative which I see, and I guess it's is the nine ball, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I would agree with that. I guess if you really got stuck, you could use that. I can't tell if that's the 11 ball <laughs> or not, but I can't. Whenever I say I like this or that uh, mm. ball as a break shot, <laughs> he's shooting at it <laughs> <laughs> directly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he's probably feels he's not going to have much trouble leaving the eight ball. No, absolutely not. The other thing uh, I think now that comes into play, uh, of course, given the number of championships Dennis has won, it, he's obviously able to play under the pressure, but there's a lot of pressure now that he absolutely has to run out because he really does figure that Thorstein will get eight, eight balls on his next shot. He can handle that pressure. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah no, yes. That, so how do, do they handle the pressure? Well, Is he even thinking about the pressure or is he just playing cannot, one ball at a time? You cannot avoid that your brain, you know, sometimes is thinking about that or that some thought um, pops up in your brain and with exactly that, what happened if I, you know, which makes you afraid. But you should have the ability to think yourself back into the game, back of what you have to do. So instead of worrying about this or that, you just think like, okay, what do I have to do now? The 10 maybe can go naturally over there, then this and this. So I try to force, when, when negative thoughts or anything comes uh, into my brain, I try to force, or sometimes I say it uh, inside to myself, I, I'm in a concentrated mood when I'm thinking what I'm doing. So I start to think what I have to do. So, for example, um, okay, the seven, uh, low right for the fourteen, then the fourteen, just low for this, this, you know. Yes. I force myself to think like this, and this doesn't give any room for negative thoughts to come in. And I want to give negative thoughts. D I don't want to give them any any room to come in. Maybe. Makes sense. Makes perfect <laughs> sense. Let's play 14-5 to the 8. So we'll just go cross table with the cue ball, I think, right? And then come yeah. in into the 8 ball for an angle. A little bit low on the 5. But as we said before, you got the abilities to slow that cue ball down a little bit, keep an angle on the 8. Yes. And the other thing about players at this level is they're not overly concerned with how long the shot is as long as they have the right angle for it mm -hmm. whereas a lot of players at my level are concentrating too much on being too close to it and that causes me to miss a lot mm -hmm. trying to get closer than I need to be actually but mm. more comfortable because it's a closer shot mm -hmm. right. So we're now uh, 142 to 95. And he got a break shot. And he has a break shot. Yes, he does. A very good break shot. And he won a clean ball. Yes. So why did he to have the ball cleaned? They wanna. They are afraid of uh, scared of uh, pitash, we say in Europe. Um, and if you hit the object ball and you hit it with the, the exact point where you hit it. And if there's some dirt on the cue ball, it might have some bad effect of the outcome of the shot and forces the object ball to go somewhere else. And so it throws it offline. Yeah. yeah. 
And it, for sure it happens if this dirt spot on the cue ball hits a dirt spot on the object on ball. On the object ball. <laughs> okay, well that explains it. All right, here we go. Oops. So. It has to play that high because sometimes when you hit the outside of the top balls, uh, the cue ball find its way over the long rail into the side pocket. But here you see you hit the one of the top balls pretty full, pretty solid. Well, another lesson in that shot is when Dennis first went to shoot it, he was obviously not comfortable. And he didn't adjust when he was bent over. He stood up and readjusted his alignment to mm -hmm. shoot the ball. Yeah. A lot. I noticed a lot of people will adjust while they're down. They'll move the cue ball, they'll move their head, they'll move their body. Mm -hmm. And the right way to do it is to stand back up and realign yourself totally and go back down totally. Yeah, if the adjustment is uh, too big, yes, you have to do that. I mean, if you are down and uh, uh, moving your cue back and forth, swinging your cue, uh, I mean, you still adjust, but in a way, just the weight a little bit. The know, weight's off. You're just, right. You can adjust by millimeters, right? Yes. But... Uh, of course, if it's too much, too much adju adjustment you have to make, then you have to go up, and you better do that. Yeah. yeah. But once you are comfortable, you say okay, and then no adjustments allowed anymore. This reduces, by the way, the, uh, the, the, you know, if you, if you make a shot, it's nice, but if you miss it, then there are only two possibilities why you miss it. Either way, you're okay, so your estimation was not good, or you mo uh, you made a correction after the okay. Oh, I see. So you're out of a line when you hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So alignment's important, and the lesson is if you're going to realign, stand up and do it. Don't so do it while you're bent over the table. For me, there are only two ways to miss a shot, right? Not 127 or so. <laughs> right. That's true. It's going to be quite a tight match if uh, he gets through this rack and uh, gets a break shot. Looks fine. I mean, so many possibilities that I don't want to predict anything. <laughs> yeah, and everything's open. He doesn't really yeah. have any real problems here. Two break shots, the four ball and the six ball. Hard to predict which one will remain till the end, but favorably the six ball. Wouldn't you agree? Or do you like those upper break shots? No, I like the six ball for sure. Mm. Hit more of the rack. From this point of view, it even looks uh, pretty clear that the six ball is better than the four. Nine ball, he wouldn't have a problem. He'd just go by the patterns, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here, so many choices, and he has to make decisions. So, would you go for the ten after this? Oh, is that the 10 on that? That's a 14. The 14 by the side pocket. Would you go for that next? Yeah, it looks like 13, 14, 9, 12, 4. All right. I agree. So let's see what he does. <laughs> Something different. <laughs> see? For sure. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Well. So 12, 14, 9. That's also okay. Here in the corner on the right, you see Peter Burrs. He's the, the man in charge for this tournament, isn't he? Wait, I, I, 
think this is another good example of he's he's so sure that he can draw the cue ball exactly the distance that he needs that he's not worried about over hitting or under hitting or for for some of us because we would worry about that we would get the 10 out of there earlier mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's not really concerned i mean this cue ball control There you go. So, it's, so he, he ended up exactly where we, he ended up exactly where we would have put the cue ball with our hand if we could have. Right? Mm -hmm. So tell me something about the history because you're part of the tournament also since the very beginning. Of the tournament. Well, the tournament started uh, 14 years ago. Peter Burroughs was the founder of it, and he was. Uh, mm -hmm running a, uh, just a, a straight pool league for fun. It is a hobby. It, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a, uh, a vocational pursuit for Peter. It's simply a hobby. And then I got involved with, with, uh, with uh, Peter, and uh, we were running a small annual tournament, mainly local players. Mm -hmm. And that was 14 years ago. And it's, it's grown every year since into really... In, in the uh, beginning, it was named... Uh, the, the, the Maryland, Maryland, Maryland champion. yeah, the Maryland straight pool champion. champion, and then it became. Then when we moved to Virginia, uh -huh. uh, four years uh, after ten years, we found ourselves in Virginia for four, for three years, uh, at, at uh, Diamond Billiards, um, and then it, that we renamed it the American Straight Pool Championship, uh, and then this year, of course, we moved to New York in Carom Cafe, um, and. The, the prize fund is uh, for the first prize of the first year. I think it was a thousand dollars for first, and now it's ten thousand for first. So 10, it's, it's, moved, it's amazing uh, moved, uh, moved uh, job up. what uh, uh, Peter and you and everybody involved are doing there, because you raise up and only to do this tournament year after year. Got the contacts. You got the people to find uh, to raise up this kind of money all the time. Well, it, it uh, we have the luxury of of not uh, taking uh, money from the prize fund because mm. that's not why we do it. We do it because it's uh, an interest of all of ours. Uh, so uh, the money that's raised all goes into the prize fund, and we have some some nice. very uh, some very you know generous sponsors. Uh, Simonis Cloth has uh, been a big supporter all those years, uh, and um, now uh, Carom Cafe, of course, is a, is nice. a big yeah. supporter. Um, so it, it you know it takes uh, <laughs> it takes a lot to put one of these tournaments together. Absolutely. And I, I you know. Would really want to make it clear that the the founder uh, and uh, uh, the person whose passion drives this is Peter. Mm -hmm. And we have. No, in, in Germany we have like uh, uh, also tournaments, of course, mostly only for on the weekend because it's mostly uh, for amateurs, right? This is more like a professional tournament for players who are, are full time in the billiard business so they can they can play also during the week but uh, if you play uh, with uh, amateurs then you have to do it more on the weekend right and yes. so we have weekend tournaments and most of the prize fund in the beginning we didn't have any prize fund it's just uh, um, um, trophies and then also we got prize fund but this comes mainly from the players so there's not much added money in German tournaments or in general in European tournaments. Uh, but we are still happy that they, are s that they have tournaments, of course, because it's so hard to, to get this added money, you know. And when I say oh. amateur tournaments, I mean more that um, or amateur players. It's, it doesn't mean the quality. Everybody's doing a great job. I mean, the players, they are... Even amateur players in Germany sometimes they are on professional level. It's yeah, very, <laughs> very good level. And um, and uh, and of course the tournament directors also do a good job. So it's 
good to have those amateur tournaments, but I'm missing uh, some pro tournaments also, like this one. So you can be happy here that you have, uh, that we have, or in America, the players can be happy that they have people like you and Peter who put up tournaments like this. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, I have to say that our, our board for many years, Andy Lincoln has been on the board uh, and he's directing this tournament, uh, done an outstanding job of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my son, uh, Darren, is on the board. Nice, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's uh, quite honestly, the planning for the next tournament starts the day we leave this tournament. <laughs> Because you, you have to raise the money, you know, you have to make sure the players, you know, who's coming back, and you have to have the room lined up. It's, you know, it's quite, yeah. a, quite an we ordeal. You always have a nice program. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that is true of Peter, you know. If it's going to be done, and he's going to do it right. So much to do for Thorsten so far. No. The break shot is pretty clear, 11. So I'm gonna shoot the eight ball now. Got a little bit of angle. I don't know if he's using the angle or try to just draw it. Yeah, drawing. So everything is possible now. 9, 12, 5, but it can also be uh, 5, 9, 12. <laughs> no, I see that. I see has a lot of po I'm, I'm trying to think of what I might do here. The easiest pattern for me would be the 9, 12, and 5. <laughs> yeah. um, but the problem with that pattern is if you're slightly off on the, you're going to have to do something with the cue ball. From the five ball to get back over to the break shot, and if you're a little out of line, you're going to have to go up and down the table to do it. Hmm. So he's um, uh, well, he's going to have to do that now. He's not worrying to go up and down the table. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm, my anxiety is about what happens when I play or coming out. Maybe he's even thinking, oh, I haven't used the other side of the table in the lately. I should do that. <laughs> yeah, well, he's confident enough as long as he's in line with it, he's going to pocket it, and then he's going to be where he wants to be with the break shot. So. And he wants a clean cue ball every rack. That's okay. And here... Our tournament director, right? There he is, Andy Lincoln, yes. Andy Lincoln. Member of our esteemed board of directors and uh, tournament director. And student of the game, I would say Andy is a student of the game. Is that right? Yes, he will. He'll and hit a great shot. Here we got to prove, Simone. <laughs> Simone's one of our class, one and of our we got a proud, proud to have Simone as the main sponsor. Here, yes. Right? Eight ball in the middle is not necessary. We're not playing eight ball, right? <laughs> 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 but it's common to many players to place it. Uh, the eight ball is in the center, even when they play straight. Play. I don't know why. I always try to avoid it. Uh, um, on the opening break. Yeah. Is there a, for the corner balls, mm -hmm. is there a preferred corner ball if you're the breaker, if you're the one who's going to break in the opening break and straight pull? You mean the number or color? Color. Not for me. But I've heard rumors that a lighter color maybe um, gives some advantage, but I really cannot see anything uh, here. I don't care which ball is on the corner. I don't care at all. Okay, that answers it. In, in eight ball, I know the, the, the rules in a lot of leagues are uh, 
the five ball in one corner and the ten ball in the other. But you're not hitting the corner, you're hitting the one ball in the front. So, Well, if you have uh, rules for that, it avoids even the thinking or discussion about anything else. That's yeah. fine. It's good to have rules. I, I, usually, um, I usually like the five ball. Mm -hmm. I, I can see it you know, pretty clearly. All right, well, uh, Dennis... Uh, a nice break shot, a little bit fortunate that the seven drifted down, so it becomes an easy shot. Otherwise, he'd have had a, a so much different side, set of problems. Here. If you play a if you play a player like me who doesn't care which ball is on the corner, and in the beginning I give you maybe the six and the eight in the corner, um, this is not a bad sportsman conduct uh, con <laughs> conduct or anything like that. I'm just not yeah, thinking yeah, at all about yeah, it. It's not on your mind. Well, it's not on most people's mind when they rack them. You know. And and the, it seems to me to be the, the preferred method now is rack your own. In almost every game I've seen lately, uh, the tournaments nine ball, ten ball. The yeah, it player more racks his own, so he can put whatever he wants on the corner. Or she, she can put whatever she wants on the corner. More and more popular to rack yeah. your own. Right? Yeah, it does save a lot of disputes uh, over whether the balls are frozen or not frozen, and so forth. And, and, and it. On the side, open this little pack a little bit. Is this trouble I had here? I don't know if the two ten ball combination will throw that much, probably not. Well, the six is straight in. So pretty he much. got the six, 14. Yeah, the six is straight in. And the 13, maybe, but. So. But still, he got the three ball cluster, somehow he has to solve that. And, you know, uh, although we talked about it, perhaps it's not on Dennis's mind, it would be on mine that if I get through this rack, uh, then I'm in striking distance in the next rack. I mean, need 13 balls in the next rack. I think that's right. Because mm -hmm. he's at 123, so he'd be at 137. Uh, and you need 13 out of the next rack. So that makes it a lot easier because then you don't need a break shot. You don't have to worry about a break shot to uh, continue to run. You just have to finish 13 balls out of the rack. You have a lot in your mind when you play here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, some people would say I have nothing else in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To take care of those three balls, you might have uh, need a nice angle on the five ball, but most of that nice angle is blocked by the eight. So either way, he needs a need to use the one ball to get it perfect position on this five ball or he uses uh, maybe the nine after the one to go into this three ball pack so you have a lot on your mind too so uh, <laughs> yeah. you have to because uh, you so that no negative thoughts have got room to come into there you <laughs> go That's, yeah, you got a point there angle on the one to hold it for the nine ball probably so he's thinking maybe about 13 and then he got a certain position on the five but 
uh, need to cheat the pocket a lot to, <laughs> to open the cluster with it. So it could be also, yeah. Oh, he's using this little angle he got on this ball to get it uh, maybe a little bit further in order to use the nine to open those three balls. If he uses the nine now, I don't know if he can hit uh, one of those three balls. So. Well, he's trying to figure it out. So <laughs> he's doing exactly what you uh, indicated the higher level players do. I mean, he's, he's, thinking, he's thinking it out and he's, mm -hmm. he's not excited over it. He's just trying to figure out how to solve it. Mm -hmm. And he even had a smile on his face, so he's, you know, he's yeah. not. Uh, it's like a riddle. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. we can have fun. Right. Have a yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, he, right? He's yeah. going to solve it or not solve it. If he hits the nine, maybe soft enough, he might hit the ten a little bit. But no, he's not. Thinking about it, he's pointing of the position he would like to have, maybe on the one. So he's drawing that to the one more. I'm not so sure. I don't yeah. know. If he's okay, all right. And with this, too much angle again, almost. Because I guess he can hold it to get the angle on the line to open these three balls. Oh, I, okay. All right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I might have just. Uh, not that I'm going to second guess him, but I, I might have just um, stayed, sh shot the nine, and, and then played the five, and that way the least there. Yeah, but then you, I'd have to break them up, right? Yeah, you know, makes it harder. Yeah, he might try here. There you go. No, he goes directly into it. Directly. And he got very into lucky it. too. He got very lucky, very, very lucky. Because the 10 ball passes here. Uh, he also has a straight in shot on the five ball, so no matter how it works out, he's yeah. in good shape here. Yeah, you see, not much room for the 10 ball to pass the 15, and no. it's very close. So yeah, he'll shoot the five, I suspect. It's a straight in shot. Not much uh, difficulty for for him. He just wants to make sure he doesn't. He has a shot after this one, I think. <laughs> So he would be in trouble if he rolled behind the, uh, I think that's the eight ball. But looks like he's gonna go outside the eight ball. Uh, there you go. Very unusual, the only player I see so far who puts the chalk uh, back in his back pocket a lot of times. You see that? Now he puts it on the table. But before he was a lot in his back pocket. So, uh, do you know who's left in the tournament, Ralph? Kachi. Kachi. And, uh, and uh, Kutlik from Poland. So Kachi from Albania, Kutlik from Poland. One of our gentlemen here? Yes, one of these two. And then one more is one missing, One more right? with one missing. If Andy comes up, I'll ask him. Now, did he want that angle, or did he want a shorter angle just to go across to the, to the side rail? Crosses uh, to prefer. I mean, 
Because now he has to go. He has to go, but uh, two rails, right? The thinking of a player like this is, I can handle it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know he doesn't have my worries when he's got this shot. But he won't go straight up and down, will he? No, he can go two rails. Yeah, two rails. High, high right, far, low left. He's going to go around. Oh, no. Oh, he's going to stay in there. I saw that a lot of times. He likes to do that a lot. He likes to do that a lot. Uh, like four times at least I saw it. That he leaves the cue ball in the, in the rag zone so he can have ball in hand behind the head spin, which for a lot of players is not so comfortable to shoot from that distance. But here, even in his final rag, he's choosing that option. Not the option I would choose, but so that that shows confidence. how much yeah. confidence he has. Yeah, yeah. Right. I agree. So he needs 13, and that's uh, that's the end of it. He does not need to go into another rack if he opens this. It makes 12 more balls out of the rack. The game is over. Made the most of his opportunities. Sorry, you can't uh, can't fault that. It's hard to take when you have a scratch like that. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is right. right. That's a scratch that <laughs> is so uncommon that you don't even think about it. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, the three ball. Yeah, he got very lucky there. Ooh. Very lucky. Without this corner, he would be in big trouble. Yeah, if that didn't catch the corner, he would be in trouble. But it doesn't look like things were going to go Thorsten's way <laughs> once that uh, fluky scratch occurred. Wow. It's a good time to get a good roll. A very good time to get a good roll. Not enough angle for the 15 to open the remaining cluster. Should he use the five to get a better angle? Or should he go down to try to get an angle on the 11? Or on the two ball? That's what you're thinking about. Where is the angle uh, on which ball that I can get to in order to open the remaining cluster? Sooner or later. Some players like to take care of it as soon as possible and some later, but this is not a good position here. No, he sure didn't <laughs> want to be there. I can't, it doesn't, I can't tell if the 14 goes, but I imagine it does. And we'll know if he lines up for it, that it goes. But this is not the shot he wanted. Although it's not a, uh, not a terribly difficult shot. You see, that was the uh, case you were talking about before, right? When you are in a bad, you put yourself in a bad situation, could have been easier. Now, you see how he's handling it. He was shaking his head in the beginning, so yeah, I did that. It's reality, but now he's uh, laughing a little bit about it, coming back, and now, okay, what to do? What to do, and I do that exactly. What I have to do. Oh, he's shooting. He's not for shooting two the fourteen, ball. is he? He's going for the two. Oh ball. yeah, two ball. Yeah, okay. And that's a. Ooh. Makes it. Okay. Well, yeah, and again, <laughs> he's the making rain. life harder and harder. It seems. With this nine ball, he might get a nice angle on the eleven, and then, and then, then the 
Russia would be over. So is the fact that he's closer to the rail, how much more difficult does that make the shot? Yeah, you can try. You can uh, play a hundred shots, or maybe in the beginning just ten, from uh, two balls, ball size distance from the rail, and do another ten uh, from frozen to the rail. And then you see a difference. Yeah, he's got to cut this in, and I suspect if he makes this ball, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty much the end of it. I would guess that uh, maybe. player makes this shot from not on the rail, but uh, not being on the rail with 100% and on the rail maybe only 80% left or so, or 90, depends on the player, but of course it will cost you something. Even though at the end you don't make 10 or 100 balls from that position, so, but uh, statistically uh, you have to, so if you do it, you always still make the shot, it costs you more concentration. <laughs> yeah, it's not over. The party is not over. <laughs> still thrilling here. He can leave two balls, right? Oh, he needs seven. He needs seven. Look at the cue ball. Look at the cue ball. Scratch. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, oh my good. goodness gracious. Who would ever expect to see? Look, even he. He's <laughs> smiling about I have to say, it, it's, it's. Pretty good sportsmanship there, I think. <laughs> you know, I think now if I mail my stick would be through the window, but and 142 fortunately to 142. for uh, for Thorsten, there's enough balls on the table that uh, uh, he would not have to go into another rack if he finishes yeah. these off. Uh, uh, uh. Right? Yes. Here he needs eight. He needs eight, nine on the table. So uh, Two. I think he has to play this. Uh, what is that ball? That ball. Because that, then he really has a lot of shots open once he plays that ball. That's right. Because that ball blocks. Yes. Yeah. Blocks the other ones. And he's got the side pocket. And I, I would say from here he's a pretty big favorite to pocket and get out. Now, w these two balls don't go, right? From the other side, they do. Yeah, from the other side, so but not from where he is now. He has to get there. Or Does he need he those? He needs only one, you know, so, I mean, three more, four more balls. Yeah, so, so. he may go across now. Yeah, not cross, he can handle the four ball from there. So if he pockets one of these in the side, they're probably the, he's probably gonna shoot yeah, Will he actually play the ten? I don't think so. Oh really? Oh yeah. That, yeah I thought he got a shot on the. Yeah, he'll and then he'll be pretty straight in on the other one. Mm -hmm. so, if he pockets here, it's over, I think. Yeah. yeah. Wants to make sure he pockets the ball. That's the first rule of pool: make sure you're going to pocket the ball. <laughs> and that's it. Well deserved. <laughs> that. All right, Justin Holman is our third Look player. 
I have to say, I admire Dennis's attitude yeah. here. I mean, he's uh, <laughs> still enjoying himself, it appears. Absolutely. And uh, I guess some would say this was a game of poetic justice. Do you have that term in Germany, poetic justice? Huh? A term in Germany, the term poetic justice. Poetic justice. Poetic. Poetic justice. In other words, it, it, it looked like it was going to go the other way, and uh -huh. it turned out to be the way it maybe should have been in the first place, uh -huh. right? In, in a fair-handed yeah, way. All right, it was fun to have you here. Enjoyed and, it. And uh, wish everybody a good evening. You turn it off. <laughs>